WoW needs a new endgame. And this is it. Oh, man, has Marcellian figured out what we gotta do? You guys know how I feel about Mythic rating as the endgame. I've always thought, you know, if your endgame is only accessible to like 0.2% of your player base, it's probably not, you know, built correctly. But uh, let's see what Marcellian has figured out about WoW's new endgame. Bye bye dungeons and raids. We want a new endgame. And by we, I mean us. And by us, I mean you. Because we are not just talking out of our asses here. Current okay. and unsubbed players are all aching for new stuff. And the evidence is obvious. Oh, uh, what is this? He's got surveys out here? I like Dragonflight. Hold on. I like Dragonflight. 48%. New stuff like Delves. Yeah. I'm so excited about Delves, not because of Delves themselves necessarily, but about because they, I feel like they're going to bring back world content. I've told you guys before, world content is one of my favorite things to do in the game. It's the time where you feel like you're really playing an MMO, like opening the gates of Encourage. Even that, remember when we were doing the Hearthstone event, I just loved seeing everybody gathering around in a single area. I, I'm definitely excited for this, and the fact that they're putting world content on the vault as one of the rows, I love it. And the evidence is obvious. Better raids, cool dungeons, open world challenges, something new. Yeah, of course, everybody wants something new. With War Within just around the corner, this can still happen, since Delves might not be the end game we want. The age of raids and Mythic Plus dungeons is over. We need a break from spamming the same dungeon six months in a row every patch. It does and get And definitely need a break from the 200th pool on a boss for the third time this tier. And with that, we would like to introduce you to the Champion's Crucible. Ooh. This should be the new endgame oh. for WoW that will bring a breath of fresh air on the game for people exhausted of the routine we've been having for over six Sounds years cool. now. The WoW team has tried multiple times to kind of add new styles of endgame with Island Expeditions and Warfronts in BFA, Torghast in Shadowlands. Can I just say Island Expeditions didn't get a fair chance? They really didn't. I, I thought if you had Island Expeditions where you could like sail between islands and do cool little events like that, it was going to be really cool. Unfortunately, Azerite Armor broke the game and they had to go all hands on deck to make sure that that thing was fixed. And they basically threw away Island Expeditions. They didn't get to work on it anymore. But I feel like of all these systems that he's mentioning, that one had the most promise and it kind of got turned to shit. And... Uh cooking and dragonflight? Suffice to say yeah. that none of these have quite hit the mark. BFA systems were poorly received, while the Torghast was aptly named by the community Chorghast. Yeah. The dragonfly ones are a little bit more okayish, but also less actual endgame-ish than what we would like to have within the actual game. So what is the Champion's Crucible? I like to say it that way. To describe it quickly, First, it would be a challenge mode, much in the same way Mage, like, like Tower, Mage Tower and actual mob challenge yeah. modes have been, but, of course, better, more modern, and with everything we liked about those, scaled to 11. Okay. It will be a pure player skill experience that will reward you with the best cosmetics in the game. That's right. right. Okay, like, I'm gonna let him cook, but here's the thing, if it, if if the end game is a single player thing, that's not really an MMO, I, that's not what I want. I wanna see, like, massive multiplayer things for the end game. Uh, but, I mean, obviously Mage Tower is a lot of fun, and I would love to see more stuff like that towards the end game, but I don't want that to be the end game. No player power, no mandatory grind, no obligatory farming, since your character will just collect the absolute best transmog sets and mounts in the game. And I don't transmogs, think you fully so understand good. what I'm trying to say here. No, I, I don't. actually mean the best. Oh. Not recolors, not store or shop versions of pizzazz. No. Uniquely designed, class-themed cosmetics oh, wow. with oh, no wow. peer currently in the game. Yes. The only real example we have in the game currently is the Plunderstorm set. It's a great and set. And before you mauled in the comments about Plunderstorm again, need I remind you, a lot of people hate the living shit out of this game mode and still farmed it to get this set. That's how True. good it is. That's the power of cosmetics, a power that was overlooked in the past. And the plunder storms... No, cosmetics are hugely important, and that's why I've, I've often said that Mythic Rating, if you want to have it as a thing in the game, reward really cool cosmetics from it, like give cool-looking tier sets. From, man, these sets look amazing, by the way. But I still think that that's a great motivation. 
not attaching player power to something that only a few minuscule people can do, but still essentially giving them the bragging rights of doing it. Because we all know that's why people mythic raid. That's the truth is they just want to, you know, big cock their way through a city, basically show up people that they did it. So give them cosmetics. Cosmetics are a huge motivator. And Plunderstorm's a great example of that. As he said, people hate it, but they still want to do it because of the cosmetics. Said is just a quick example that you actually can get right now, meaning that in terms of unique cosmetics never before seen in game can and have been made by the wall team already. And Cam Shady, to your point in chat, I mean, if you can't do it, that's the good thing, right? If you can't do it, it's only cosmetics. So it doesn't matter. You're not really missing out on much. As an example, you can literally check Tom Kick's channel, specifically oh, his that Paladin Judgment, judgment set. set. This man has to be oh. hired immediately so by the good. design team and paid all of their salaries combined. Which reminds me, this it's video so wouldn't have been possible without our Patreons that are legit paying our salaries. I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but if you like the content and thought about supporting your boys, check the link in the description and see what our Patreon platform can do for you, cause yeah. One thing it does is give you access to this video three days ahead of time, Ooh. which is what our Patreons got this time around, among other things. Now back to our armors looking better, what's even more egregious is that Heroes of the Storm has better WoW armor and mounts than actual <laughs> WoW. And this it was made does. in the StarCraft engine. Just look at this Garrosh High Warlord set, or the World Shaman Thrall, or this Direwolf. My god. Yeah, it looks freaking great. What? Too much Horde? How about the actual Judgment set of Judgment Uther on top of the actual Judgment oh Charger mount? Look, Imagine you know me, I don't play Paladin. I'm a Death Knight, but I have to admit, the Judgment set and the way some of these sets look, they're, they're glorious having this level of awesomeness translated into WoW's cosmetic world. I'm only saying this to point out that it can be done, since it has been done by smaller teams. So yeah. small... Don't forget, what about the Invincible Charger that they gave for um, for Diablo, right? They had like the pre-order or something like, I don't know what it was. It was like, it was, it was actually a storm out on Diablo. That freaking remake of Invincible looked unbelievable. Man, I wish we had a, a remake of Invincible like that in the game. Some are even one man large, and the cosmetics can be sets, weapons, and mounts, all rewarded based on the part of the crucible you are clearing. So let's talk about what it actually is. To showcase how it will work, we will draw some parallels from past content that Blizzard has designed. The crucible will be a set of rooms, each progressively more difficult. The first one will be fairly- Okay, I see what he's saying, but real quick, look at this thing. Oh my god, I need this. Why does an Invincible look like this? Holy shit. I understand this is more of a hyper-realistic look of Invincible, but just the remake of the cloth hanging over the skull. Oh, I love it, man. I wish. I wish they would remake, uh, you know, up, up, HD up-res Invincible. ...easy to get people accustomed to the content. When you are in the first room, you will fight in an encounter similar to the Mage Tower. It can be a solo boss, a council boss, a boss with ads, Literally anything is on the table. Okay. It will have to be a challenging scenario that once cleared, you can progress to the next room and fight the next encounter. The Crucible can have sets of three rooms and once completed, you will get a portal that takes you to the next level of difficulty, similar to how greater rifts are in Diablo 3. It kind of sounds like Torghast. You complete the room and then you go into the portal of the next room. Uh, look, Torghast wasn't all bad. It's just the repetitiveness of it got so bad. It was, oh my God, it made me want to throw up in my mouth just thinking about it. And uh, this, I mean, there's a single player challenge mode, which is fun. Mage Tower was fun, you know, for what it was. But making it part of the end game, I don't know if I want that. I don't know. And I don't know if I want single player content. That's why Delves are kind of interesting because they're not single player, but they can be single player. And I think based on what he's saying here, if he made it kind of variable, right, where you have the option to make it single player or not, I think that would be a, a better take. Three, but before you advance, you will open your chest of rewards that will have your gloves and belt from the set and each subsequent chest will unlock more of the cosmetic set until the last room gives you the yeah, weapon and the mount. mandatory. The rewards can Very be given in any order or quantity. This is just mainly a hypothetical example. The rooms will get difficult enough where you might need to get some more eye level to clear or multiple tries to get it right. Not really sure here. This is a delicate thing That's to fine. consider. Do we want people to be able to clear this week one of the patch? Do we want people to only clear it with max eye level available in that season? Well, Probably I mean, yeah, you make in between. 
Yeah, it's something in between is what the Mage Tower was, right? Like, people who were extremely skilled at their class, unbelievably good at the game, cleared it fairly early on, whereas other people, it was so difficult, uh, even for me, that she had to get a bit more gear to be able to finally do it. And that was fine. That was a good level of difficulty. And making it cosmetic only really didn't make you have to do it too quickly, right? It wasn't part of the actual progression of the game. It was just a cosmetic. So you did it when you finally could do it, and you made multiple attempts at it, and eventually you finally got it. This can always be adjusted, but the idea is to be likely the hardest thing you have to do skill-wise during that patch to elevate the value of the cosmetic and its inherent prestige. And yes, patch, because each patch or minor patch will add new rooms to go into with new cosmetics to acquire, and yeah. each set is unique to the class, similar to how the aspect of the tier sets are. And on that note, the Champion's Crucible will be an instant zone, kind of how Torghast is. So when you okay. walk in, you are greeted by NPCs, statues, or armor stands wearing the sets available to be obtained within That's the actual cool. challenge. This is similar to how Mop had its challenge mode armors displayed on stands that, that in the cool. capital cities. This would work as a little teaser for the player to always see what they are aiming for and also give them a taste of what other classes can obtain, further incentivizing completing the challenge on alts as well. Right. The Champion's Crucible will also be different from the Mage Sour in the sense that it cannot be soloed. You can, however, form a group with a friend up to five players and clear it that way. Having okay, more than cool. one player as a requirement will also allow the dev team to create more interesting encounters that can take advantage okay, of... Okay, so it's not a solo piece. It's, it, this sounds kind of like Delves, to be honest. I mean, I understand Delves are not really multiple rooms, but it's aren't Delves, they kind of described it as somewhat instanced content, where like you'd be going in with a group. I think that's how, they, how it's going to be. A more diverse kit of utility, stuns, fears, all of that stuff that was also kind of necessary within the mage I'm interested to hear more and about even delves. the possibility to heal or tank the bosses if the players decide to approach it that way. Once a new patch rolls out, we would have a new set of challenges that scale to the new seasonal gear so that one, sure. the older challenges don't have to be scaled up and two, the devs can avoid creating class templates for encounters that would immediately become outdated with class reworks and redesigns. Right. And with this, older challenges can just become trivial as time goes on, giving eventually everybody a chance to easily acquire the set. This way, the prestige will be yeah, wearing the set during its respective season, and the earlier you wear it, the cooler you are. As certainly, yeah, that was Mage Tower. It's a it was a really cool thing about Mage Tower was eventually you were gonna get it, right? Eventually, if you kept trying it, everybody was gonna get it, no matter your skill level, because you were just gonna kind of outgear the challenge of the Mage Tower. But those people who got it early on, you guys remember them. I do. You see, seeing somebody in the Mage Tower set early on in the expansion, you were like, damn. This guy's cocked as shit. And that was a really cool moment for that guy. It was a really cool moment for me, even though I didn't have it. Because you kind of, it's like, you know, skill recognizing skill kind of thing. Where, you, you know, you see somebody and you understand the achievement they just had just by the gear they were wearing. Human being, since you were able to acquire it with less gear. That level of ego boost that we all have to admit shared to an extent oh, will yeah. make players want to give this as much of a go as possible and clear it as quick as as possible. The rewards being finite and guaranteed will also work towards giving you the sense of completion where you can just say, okay, I'm done with this now. Which right. seems to be a taboo when it comes to endgame content in the last couple of years, where it never really feels like you are done getting your gear. Since one, you can only get max eye level through upgrades and that takes a long time. And two, by the time you get it, chances are the new season is around the corner, making all of your progress yeah, like and legendary. rewards feel like two-year-old daily worn socks, since LFR gives the same gear as Mythic from the previous season. The goal of the Champion's Crucible, patent pending, is to solve a few problems <laughs> that current WoW and game has. The first one is the problem of fulfillment. And game right now is less about overcoming a challenge and more about acquiring loot. The only real kind of, challenge yeah. is the last boss on Mythic, which is something that less than 3% of the player base will ever have access to. Since yeah, that's, that, the that's the problem, right? Is like normal, certainly he's right. It's, it's about like, you know, getting gear. It's not really, we don't, we don't progress in heroic anymore. We literally form a pug raid on this stream and just delete all the bosses, one-shotting every single one. The only reason we were still going in there is so I can get my damn legendary which I finally did last week.
But going in there and just getting the gear, that was all that matters, getting the crest, that's all. That's the only reason we're doing it. But then if we want a challenge, the next step up is not a step. It's a cosmic leap, right? It's unbelievable how high Mythic's challenge goes compared to Heroic. And there's, there's nothing in between. There's nothing to fulfill you in between. That's it. It's like you either just destroy and delete Heroic bosses or you, you find out some way to finally kill a Mythic boss. And there's, uh, that's an issue for sure. The boss that gives you the no, unique it just mount, requires organization. The it does, it does. And the unique feeling of accomplishment. It's a very poor sell of endgame content to your average player when 97% will only get it to the expansions later. <laughs> the second issue is character progression continuity, which is crucial for an MMO's player satisfaction. True. This is a deeper problem, and it revolves around the actual reason for dungeons and raids. Gear. Getting it takes a while, which normally is fine, but yeah. having to delegate it to the trash bin once a new season starts is criminally insulting. It hurts. Using myself as an example to outrage in this video, killing Laradar and hopefully Smoldron very soon is hella difficult. On Mythic, of course. Right. Smoldron actually has some of my best in slot trinkets. Ooh. The chase is fun if I can get them, and if I do, I legit feel good about myself and the game. But once season four starts, the new Damn. raid season will have LFR give me the same trinket. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of true. And, and look, so the one thing about the legendary and the reason why I wasn't like hyper, I would have been fucking devastated if I got it now and next week the new season starts and there was like, it wasn't relevant anymore. Yeah, that would have hurt me a lot. The good thing is in the Awaken season, it'll still be relevant because I can upgrade it. And upgrading best in slot items is a great thing. I don't think they should do it for all gear. But I do think that there's those specific things like the, like my legendary, maybe like some really good trinkets like he's mentioning, that you should be able to upgrade, right, in the next season. You don't, you're not going to get to upgrade it automatically. It's not going to automatically jump an eye level. But if you're killing the, that new boss in the next season, you should be able to kind of use a crest or something like that to keep it up with the new season, since you worked so hard to get that biz piece. How are my over 200 pulls on these bosses weeks of progression, log analyzing, cooldown perfecting hours of sweat going to feel. I will legit feel like a moron for trying so hard. Or I won't because it's a video game and I'm not stupid. Sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the only thing left for me to feel is apathetic towards my goals as a raider. The enjoyment only really comes from the challenge and the opportunity yeah. to play with funny people. Apathy twice. builds as the season continues, definitely. Getting something early on in the season feels great. Getting something the last week of the season before it becomes irrelevant kind of doesn't. It's weak. That's fun. But that's also hardly a game or an MMO experience. I can get that dose from going out to beers with my friends. So what then does the game do for me? Not much in that sense. WoW needs a new endgame bad, and I'm not sure delves are it from what the devs have said so far. And if two dumbasses yeah. like us can brainstorm something in two hours by just looking at the past of WoW and other Blizzard games, surely a trained team of game designers can do even better. And they have been doing better throughout the expansion. And as much as we criticize, Season 4 is looking to be really fun. Yeah. Check our video yep. on it if you're still unsure and you'll change your mind. Right. No, I look, I, I agree with a lot with what we said. The thing is about Delves is we really don't know anything. The, the, they've really said very little about Delves. We just know that it is going to be relevant to the vault. It's going to be relevant to gearing up. And uh, it's, it's going to be an important part of gear progression. Not required, but certainly a way to gear progress. So I think we need more details on Dells before we can really determine whether or not it's going to be a good endgame mode. I'm excited for it because I feel like it brings relevancy to open world content, which I love. It's cool. It's going to be, you know, some grouped up content that you'll be able to do. Uh, in terms of the game mode that Marcellian just described, I did like it. I thought it was interesting. I like the fact that it's an endgame mode that gives you cosmetics, mainly. That's important, because that's what I've been saying Mythic rating should be for the longest time now. We'll have to wait and see. I think a lot of uh, the success or failure of uh, the War Within expansion specifically is going to really ride on, are Delves fun to do? Are they good? And that new hero talent system. Man, that shit's going to be risky. I really hope they knock it out of the park. I do.